All right. Uh, so I watched this movie uh, a couple weeks ago now. It was Life Force from 1985. I actually had this movie kind of on my watch list, movies to watch for quite a while. Uh, it's mainly because of some of the people behind the scenes that are involved. Uh, it was directed by Toby Hooper. So his first, his first movie was a, a little-known film called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 70s. So that's what really propelled him you know, into being really popular. In 1974, that came out. And then uh, another movie that I know of his that I still haven't seen yet, but I want to, is called uh, The Fun House. It's another horror film. And then, of course, he directed uh, 1982's Poltergeist, uh, which I just reviewed the other day. So after that, he did this movie, Life Force. So pretty, pretty decent director uh, behind the movie. And another big, big name that really got me interested was uh, Dan O'Bannon. So he wrote the screenplay and the story for Alien, the original Alien. So that's huge right there. And he's uh, very well known for being an excellent sci-fi writer, writer of science fiction. And then he wrote and directed The Return of the Living Dead. Um, and that movie is awesome. I love that movie. So with him as a writer, he wrote the screenplay for this movie, and Toby Hooper as a director, you know, I thought this would be definitely a good one to watch. And then it was on one of the podcasts I listened to, uh, the really funny how did this get made with Paul Shear? They are doing this movie, so I was like, well, if they're watching it and they're going to review it, I better watch it. And then I was also kind of concerned because I was like, well, why are they watching it? Because um, they usually do either bad movies um, or no, you know, kind of interesting cult movies. This is definitely a cult movie, but <laughs> after watching it, I know why they did it because this movie is not that good. It's it's even it's hard to explain. I guess the basic synopsis is. A group of astronauts find a spaceship that is in the tail. Actually, it's not in the tail. It's um, in front of Halley's Comet. Uh, so a spaceship, they go in there. They find a race of vampires, but they look like people. There's two guys and a girl. Uh, they're all, like, really attractive, uh, perfect beings, I guess. They bring them back to Earth, and they turn out to be these kind of weird vampires, but they turn people kind of into zombies it's not it's not really clear if they're zombies or vampires but anyways they're in london and they start infecting people and they go around trying to stop them it's it's a confusing plot i think i fell asleep at one point because it's not that good um it's just so weird it's a very interesting movie you can kind of see how they're it seemed like they were just taking parts of very popular science fiction films and trying to do their own thing with it. I mean, there's a very heavy, like, alien vibe to this, which kind of makes sense with Dan O'Bannon on board. But then there's, like, the very varying aspects of vampires. And then also, I guess, since Dan O'Bannon did Return of the Living Dead, there's some of that vamp um, zombie-type stuff. So it's just... I kept thinking of a, a more recent movie, uh, Oblivion, with Tom Cruise. And... That's not a very good movie either, and it's because they just take all, all of these different bits and pieces of popular science fiction movies, and you can see them in the film. So, like in Oblivion, I kept seeing different um, sci-fi films in there, and so it was boring. It wasn't very original, and I think this is kind of similar. This this movie, Life Force, it takes a bunch of different aspects of popular movies, and it's very clear it's very clearly seen in the film you can kind of see where those parts of those movies are so you can see the vampire part you can see the zombie part and you can see like the alien part at the beginning it's it's not and it, it you know a lot of movies do that they put a spin or they recreate something that's been done before but they do it differently and the problem with this is that they don't do anything differently with it they just and you know it's kind of cut up and put together it's just too obvious where they got their influences from, which is unfortunate. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, felt, I think I fell asleep for a little bit at one part. It's very, not very good. The effects are decent, um, especially for the time, I guess, 85. There are some okay effects, the special effects. Um, definitely not enough to, you know, kind of keep the movie going. But I do remember there's a part where the vampire 
slash looks like a zombie, uh, disintegrates while uh, running against like a wall. That's pretty cool. Um, and also there's a part with, <laughs> there's kind of a funny part with uh, Patrick Stewart is in this. I think it's one of his earlier films. Uh, he plays like a psychiatrist and this part's okay. But definitely not much keeping this um, going as far as the pacing goes and the plot. It's kind of all over the place. It's really, I don't even want to you know, try and sit down and give a plot, full plot synopsis because I don't know if I could. The only thing that I can say <laughs> about the movie that is kind of positive other than like, you know, the limited special effects is that the main, so the main vampire is a woman and her name is literally Space Girl is what she's credited as. Um, she's very attractive and she walks around uh, fully naked for a good majority of her scenes, so you have, you have that going, but um, that's like a positive part of the movie, but it's not even like a big name actress or anything, so it's not like you can't see naked women on the internet or anything, so anyways, I'm giving it a, a 1.75 out of 5, so wouldn't recommend it, definitely not for just regular, you know, movie watchers, you don't need to see this for any reason. Maybe if you're like a, a super diehard sci-fi fan and you want to see some decent, well, I don't even say decent. It's just be, because it has Dan O'Bannon attached to it, I think it's interesting for that aspect. Um, and if you just kind of need to see every single sci-fi movie dealing with space. I thought actually it started out okay with a couple things. I got a very reanimator kind of vibe going at the beginning. And it has that 80s feel to it, which I really like, 80 horror, 80s horror films. So I was kind of hopeful at the beginning that it would continue to be almost like a John Carpenter-esque type film, but that that quickly went away. So um, didn't have any of that going. A couple other movies, connections that I saw uh, when I was watching it. I mentioned, uh, you know, Alien is very obvious, but then it has kind of like a species kind of a vibe to it with the female space girl lead. Uh, there's also a little bit like Event Horizon aspect going on with the, the space scenes and then uh, Under the Skin, uh, a recent film with Scarlett Johansson. And you know, all those other than Alien and like Reanimator that I've mentioned, those are mostly more, more modern uh, sci-fi films. So maybe they were slightly influenced by this, but I don't know. So yeah, 1.75 out of 5, uh, that'll be it.